Domain and range is probably one of the harder definitions for students to visualize from a graph. So starting off today, we're going to just have a couple examples um, from different websites that I think are incredibly useful to math students. The first one is purplemath.com. Uh, its definition for domain and range is that the set of all starting points is called the domain and the set of all ending points is called the range. The domain is what you start with, the range is what you end up with. The domain is the x's, the range is the y's. Now, this last part of the definition is a little bit dangerous because we could change what our x-axis and y-axis are for the Cartesian plane, but pretty much the horizontal axis usually is called x, so that's the domain. The range is the vertical axis, which is the y. Uh, math is fun also has a great definition. It says in its simplest form, the domain is all the values that go into a function and the range is all that comes out. So you might hear people say domain is input and range is output. So input, you plug x into the function. The output gives you f of x, which is function notation. Now, it's all great and easy when you're given a set of points. You can say, oh, here's all the x points, here's all the y points. When we start to look at a graph, that is where it gets a little more challenging for students to talk about domain and range. So to start us off, we're going to pick a very simple graph. Let's say we're at the point negative 1, positive 2. Ooh, let me not write that 2 there. Let me put it right here. Okay, so here's our little point that we have. And let me tell you that this is a function. It's a really silly function, right? It's only got one input and one output, but it is a function. And this is a relation in the sense that negative one always maps to two. That's another way people can describe it. You input negative one, your output is two. So if I only had this single point and I asked you to find the domain and range of this very basic function, then you would say the domain is that one set value. And when we use one set value, we're going to use set notation, which is the curly brackets. We list all the values, in this case, negative one, and the range here is two. Now you're going, that's fine, lady, I can handle that. What if I'm given a more complicated graph? Well, as soon as we start adding a few more points, let's go ahead and just take a look at another graph. And we're just going to give ourselves a couple more points on this graph. Let's say we start again at negative 1 and we got positive 2 hanging out here. So here is a point there. And then you know what? We also got negative 0.5. And we got positive 1. Okay, so now I have two points, but you see how this function is discontinuous. It jumps from one point to the next. Uh, we only have set values. So usually when we have those set values, we're looking at the x values, that horizontal axis for the x's. We got negative 1. And we also got negative 1 half. Okay, and then for our range, we got now two set values because there's two points there. We got 1 and we got 2. And again, I'm going to use that set notation. And you're like, okay, you added two points. That's great. That's not my problem. My problem is when it's a really ugly looking like parabola or a circle or an ellipsis. Well, it's going to be that same idea. We're just going to ease ourselves into it. Let's keep this very similar. I'm going to erase this domain and range that we just did. And I am going to take a look as if this was connected. Now, this is still, that is connected, I promise you. I'm not the best grapher, okay? Hopefully, you are a much better grapher than I. So let's say I have these set values. Now, this is saying there's a bunch of little points in between these guys that exist that map to some y. And the same story is being looked at for these y values, right? Between 1.1, there's a little point there, 1.0001, it gets really, really close, right? There's an infinite number of points hanging out between these two intervals. So I am going to describe the domain as actually this interval. Now, because this point here is solid, I am including it, it starts at negative 1. I use a square bracket to tell the reader it's included in the domain. 
And I want everything in between here, all these x's I am looking at here. So everything in between, negative 1 and a negative 1 half, are getting mapped to some y value here. So I go ahead and say continue on until we hit negative 1 half. And then, you know what, that point also has a set value, but nothing beyond it does, so I use the square bracket saying it's included. Now the range, same idea. Let's take a look. If you didn't get it that first time there with the domain, we're going to see it again. We are looking at the y values. So sure enough, one maps here, right? There's a value for it. 1.000001 has a point here. And there's so many points as you keep on seeing for the y's. I'm drawing little lines here saying, hey, all these values in between all the way until we hit 2 and then no further past it on the y-axis because range is the y values. There's nothing else. I want to say, okay, from 1. It has a point there, so I'm including it all the way to 2, including. Okay, so you're starting to get like, okay, I'm kind of seeing a little bit of this. What if it gets a little worse? Let's see another graph. Let's slowly ease ourselves in. Let's say we're taking a look at something that is parabolic. Um, looks like we got this lovely shape here. And it continues on upwards. Again, my graphing skills leave a lot to be desired. But let's say this is the vertex of it. Right? What I'm basically describing is this line comes all the way down, slows rolls here, gets steady, and then continues on the way up. And this point here is the order pair 0, 3. Let's start with domain. Domain's going to be tricky for some to visualize here. So we're going to try to go as slow as possible. Hopefully I don't put you to sleep. So we're looking at the x-axis here. Okay, I'm highlighting it there. That's where our visual is. Now we start where we read from left to right. And the x-axis starts at negative infinity. We, I mean, I can't really start at negative infinity. I don't know what that number is. But it goes all the way to positive infinity. So there's infinite in the possibilities here. Now, I drew a little arrow at the end of my great graph here. Uh, it's saying this graph continues on forever and ever in this fashion where it kind of curves outwards. Um, and I'm going to try to say, okay, well, where do I have an X value that maps to a Y value? Where do I have an input that matches with an output? Because that input needs to be part of my domain. My domain is all the inputs, inputs, all the X values. And this says somewhere way out here, if I made this graph a little smaller, let's say like this is where my picture kind of started. You see it kind of goes all the way off and keeps on going on and on to negative infinity. So there is some value out there, maybe, I don't know, let's say this is negative 1 billion, okay, that B saying billion. There is a Y value relating to it. I don't know what it is, it's some positive number, but it is out there. And you know what, you keep thinking of a smaller number, maybe negative 10 billion. Sure enough, he's way out there, and you might be going, well, you're using the same point. That's the idea. This graph says it continues on forever in this fashion so it keeps the same pattern that domain can get as small as it wants so because i don't really know what that value is i can't include it um, i don't see the graph ending so i use a parenthesis parentheses are not including it means it kind of kind of continues on right from that negative infinity and then I keep on traveling all the way along. There's infinite many of points. And I'm looking at the x axis. Ac ugh, can't talk. X axis. Hopefully don't say that wrong in front of your teacher. And I keep on going, 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 going. And I'm going to eventually approach that positive infinity because this arrow says it continues on. So think of the giantest number you can. Maybe 100 billion. I don't know. You probably could think of a bigger number, right? This point exists on this graph because it keeps on going on and on forever. So it's all real numbers. Now you might be going, okay, I'm okay with the domain there. It's the range that kind of freaks me out. Well, the range is the same idea, except instead of left to right, we start down here at the bottom and work our way up. So again, this is a visual thing for most students. It's a little challenging. It's okay if you don't get it right away. When we start, we're starting down here at negative infinity, and you'll notice there's no blue graph. 
my graph is written in blue um, and I don't have anything down here. There's nothing going on, nothing going on, nothing going on, nothing going on. Oh, right here. Suddenly at this point, and I'm looking at the Y's because I'm on the Y axis, okay? The output, that's the range. The output is the Y values and sure enough, starting at three. And because this point is on my relation, on my graph, I want to include it. So I'm going to say square bracket from three all the way up. And it keeps on having actually tons, infinite many of them, right? Uh, outputs here and goes on forever in this fashion. So we say on to infinity. All right. Let's take a look at another one that's a little bit more funky, okay? And maybe it might help clear up some questions you have for me. So our graph we're going to take a look at is going to look something like, let's say this is positive three, uh, you know what, let's make it unique, four. Positive four continues on. Oop. Again, my graphing skills leave a lot to be desired. Um, and then let's say down here at negative four, I got a point there and it's going down. All right. So here's our graph. This is a hyperbole, hyperbola, um, hyperbole. Oh my goodness. It doesn't matter really what it's called. We got to find the domain and range of this nasty thing. Now domain is probably going to slowly get a little bit easier for you. Whenever you see any arrows or if like your graph is implying to you that it continues on forever and the arrows are on both sides or it goes off, sometimes you see like a box and you see a graph go all the way up to the edge of the boxes. That's also another way of implying to the reader it continues on forever. If you see it continuing on forever from the left and the right, you're already guaranteed that your domain is all reals. Now the range is much more tricky here and that's usually what students start to struggle because they can visualize the X's because they're like, oh, I read left to right, but it's going from bottom to top that gets a little more challenging. So we start here at the bottom and we have these arrows saying, yeah, this graph keeps on going on and on. So there is some value that's really, really small somewhere at negative infinity. And then we kind of keep on going up, 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 up. And then we hit this point negative four. And then the graph stops for a period of time. Now it is including that negative four because there is a point. So I use the square bracket. But whenever you have a break in your range and then it starts up again, you use the union symbol. And then sure enough at positive four, including it because that point is having it start there. And then it keeps on going up forever and ever to infinity. All right, hopefully that helps you out. Let's see one last one. You know what, for this one, I'm gonna pull up a graph that I already stole uh, from a nice uh, computer generated picture. Let's say I'm taking a look at this. This is an ellipses and I wanna find the domain and range of this guy. So domain, we're looking at the x-axis, and if you ever need to, um, you can always take a finger or a pen up to a screen if you're looking at it, or a highlighter if you have something physically in front of you, and just kind of draw on the x-axis to see where you're starting. This is the first spot where we start, and then we kind of have a bunch of values in between. When you see a solid line, infinite number of points. So you want to use interval notation whenever that occurs. And then it continues all the way to here. So we see a nice blockage here. Um, it's definitely, I'm going to get a count, one, two, three, four, five. So this starts at negative four. Because that point is on the graph, we use a square bracket to include it. And it continues all the way in this range, I'm sorry, this domain here, this interval all the way to zero and then it ends. Now the range, same idea. These are starting to become a little bit fun. Now you're looking at the y-axis. So I'm gonna try my best to draw a straight line. It looks like it's starting here at negative five and we work our way to the top where it ends at negative one. So our range is from negative five to negative one. And because there's no breaking or anything, we don't have to use union symbols. That is all we have. 
Hopefully this cleared up more than making things worse for you. Um, for domain and range, you're just going to be looking at your X values for domain, the inputs, and the range is your outputs.